All right, so now we will be looking at common mistakes that are made when using promises. To them, common mistakes are nesting dot thens, which I completely agree with. Um, this is not very readable. You can't really tell what is the initialization and what each thing is hap like is happening. So what I, from what I understand, what they're trying to do, yeah, what they're trying to do is make sure that these dot thens are. Um, functions that come after another. So thinking about it in terms of like piping. So if you're doing like array formulas, so like const r equals say one, two, three, four, five, um, you do r dot map and then some function on that. Um, and then you'd like dot filter and then dot sort dot reverse, which I mean, just change the sort function, but you, you understand the point, right? It's trying to turn this into kind of like the same concept. So it'd be whatever the promise returns and it would be dot then, dot then, dot then. So it makes a lot more sense what is happening um, because you can see this one starts and then this one starts and then this one starts, okay? So let's take a look at what they're doing. So in the code, blah, 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 it works correctly, but it doesn't follow best practices, so Let's look at it. Node app.js. Let's run it. So it runs properly. All right. Check work. Great. Refactor, rewrite the code. So what I'm going to first do, return. Actually, I'm just going to, it goes in this order. Uh, inventory pay order log. OK, just so I remember what's going on. So process payment dot then order ship order and then console dot log so let's check the work um oh it wants anonymous functions fine So I'm taking that value, value, ship, order, value, and then data. Actually, I'll keep doing value, console.log, value. Really? Okay, its solution is going to have the bracket ones. Um, oh, it wants to delete that. That's fine. It wants to do those brackets. Fine, whatever. It's the same exact thing. It really is, except they don't do the indents, which is just stupid. Ugh. Resolved value array. Resolved value array. I hate these long freaking names. They suck. Okay. And then node app.js. Great. It works. Great. Okay. So now. Another good practice is to run promises in uh, parallel. That's the thing. It, again, it's different than multi-threading, but you can start multiple promises and wait for all of them, which is really, really useful. Because say you have an array of objects that you need to execute some sort of asynchronous code on every single one of them using a dot map function. That's where this promise dot all comes into play. Or you can just do multiple things at the same time. Okay. So let's see how this works. Our business is doing well. Check availability is that. So we want to check availability of a couple things. Let me check. Okay. If you'd like, see how the functions press check work. Okay. Check availability, and it does some sort of. Uh, restock success is some sort of math at random. Yeah, so it just wants me to check the work. Great. So, um, separate promise. Const check sunglasses equals check availability sunglasses favorite supply co and const check pants equals check pants favorite so. pants Let's check 
bags equals that bags. Okay, now check work. Great. Book promise to all. So const result equals promise to all. And then we're gonna do check sunglasses, check pants, check bags. Really hope it's gonna do something similar. Okay, and then I can chain them res dot then. I can look at sunglasses, pants, and bags, and view them. Oh, I can just do then on full fill. What the heck, dude? Did I change? Yes, I did. You ah doesn't want me to do that. Okay, fine, whatever. Then on full fill. And I like to have my chain functions like all in line with each other. Add a catch to the chain. Dot catch on reject. Type node. Node at the JS. Great. So notice how these are all running in parallel. Whereas um, I could do this dot then this dot then this and they would all run sequentially and then it would be um, no different than synchronous code. So promise to all is probably one of the more powerful parts of promises. Um, I really enjoy using it. So for example, so say I have a const sleep equals milliseconds, set timeout, uh, new promise, set, set timeout, um, resolve milliseconds. And then I need to make sure I pass in res okay so say I have an asynchronous function so I'm gonna say um, uh, const data equals one two three four five okay and I want to convert those I, I want to like request something I don't know it doesn't really matter so say I want to run an asynchronous function on each individual thing which happens more often than you think so const res res equals promise, or I'll say promise, equals promise to all, and then I can say, this is dumb, I don't want it, that thing, data.map, and then the, and maybe um, I'll say sleep, um, d times 1000, actually I'll times 100, um, dot, then I'll return, this will return nothing. Um, I'll just return nothing. I'll return the value times 100. Okay, so now if I do promise.then uh, console.log, I will see What I'm missing uh I'm missing one of these, I think. Yes I am. There we go. So now you can see it executes. It took it took a second to execute. Um, if I multiply it by one thousand, it'll take five seconds total. Two, three, four, five. Now it should be done. Um, you can see that this promise to all isn't waiting. It's waiting five seconds, which is the longest time, not five plus four plus three plus two plus one, right? Which would be uh, 15, no, 16, no, 15 seconds, right? Um, so all of these are handled asynchronously at the same time. And so you can use this dot map function that is a part of arrays, or you can have separate things. And this is actually one of my more favorite things to do, which we will learn in asynchronous functions in a second, const, uh, main async. This is another way to do asynchronous, which you'll see in a second. So I'll say const um, 
say I'm trying to do this exact thing, I'll say bags, whoops, I uh, know it's uh, sunglasses, pants, bags, equals await promise to all, and then I can run this check availability, blah, 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 right? And do that multiple times. And it will pull separate promises out. I really like that aspect. It's a, it's a very cool way to, if I have functions that I don't want to run await, do this one, await, do this one, or wait and do that one, or do this one, then this one, then this one, I can use promise to all to pull each one individually out and run them all at the same time. It's similar to multi-threading, um, but it's not. All right. So yeah, let's just review um, JavaScript object. Yeah, so we understand what asynchronous code is. Um, please say we learn await, async and await. Please, 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 please. Yes, all right. So in the next video, you will we will be working on asynchronous async and await, which I just like showed you very, uh, very, like, very uh, briefly what async and await was but we will go in more depth in that video.